Hi guys, how is it going? So if you have the HP Reverb G2, today I'm going to teach you the step-by-step -step how to transform this, this, and this into that, which is perfect tracking. This video is not sponsored by vr-wave.store, but we really think that their prescription lenses are really fantastic since they've sent us a couple pairs. If you wear glasses, we definitely recommend you should go and check them out and do use the promo code VRESSENTIALS for a 5% discount. Link in description below the like button for the full details. If you're using the HP Reverb G2, unfortunately, as they use a technology called visible light, it means it's gonna be more susceptible to tracking issues depending on the room conditions that you have set up. So if you set up your HP Reverb G2 for the very first time, and you notice that you have, you know, a lot of tracking issues, things aren't going so well, as you can see on this video as an example. Well, let me teach you the step-by-step -step as to what you can do to maximize your lighting conditions and your play space so you can avoid all these different problems. The HP Reverb G2, like most other headsets, has special software built in to be able to recognize the type of light and also the patterns on the actual light of the controllers. The LEDs will also be flashing at a specific frequency, which is too fast for the naked eye to be able to see it. But if we slow down the video, you'll see that you'll be able to notice those flashes. And the software also recognizes the color of the LEDs. So if it was to change a specific color and it doesn't render the color it's supposed to, then again, it's gonna affect the tracking. So the first rule of thumb when you're using the HP Reverb G2 is just make sure that there are no bright lights facing you or facing the controllers. If, for example, you're gonna be doing your VR next to a Christmas tree or next to another light source, which is very close to the controllers, the actual VR headset might start to get very confused in being able to recognize where the LEDs on the controllers are. And you're gonna have the same issue if you have a very bright light source shining directly towards the actual VR headset, no matter how far or how close it might be. If it's too bright, it might simply overcast the LEDs, making it very hard for the VR headset to be able to track them. Sebastian Ong from MRTV gave a very good tip, which is to make sure that if you're gonna be playing during the daytime, to shut any of your windows and the shutters so you don't have any direct sunlight pouring in onto you, especially if you're gonna be playing directly next to your window. Make sure that for your ceiling lights, you're not gonna be using spotlights or tungsten lights, which are gonna be shining directly over you towards your headset. It's highly advisable to avoid having any kind of lights on your walls that are around the VR headset, especially, you know, those LEDs that come in these kind of long tubes, they shine very bright and this can affect the tracking a big way. For ceiling lights, other than those who have spotlights or who have tungsten lights, then I definitely suggest that you should get some kind of soft box which can diffuse the light basically all around the room as opposed to pointing directly towards you underneath. If you have standard lights, which are similar to the ones in this video, make sure that you point them towards your wall as well so that your wall can basically diffuse the light and make the light go everywhere, but don't overdo it. You don't need to place two lights, three lights, four lights, all over the room, you just need to place maybe one or maybe two, depending on the voltage, you might have to experiment there. So what I suggest you do is just do a very quick troubleshooting. And then once you make sure that there are no lights positioned behind you or around you towards the headset, then what you could do is just switch on one light first and then do some gameplay, see how you go. If you feel that the tracking is still not there, then switch on another light. And then again, if you feel that you need to switch on another one, then do so. But I really feel that if you're gonna be using a light that is pretty standard, then one ceiling light should be more than enough. And then perhaps if you don't have a ceiling light, then maybe a couple of standing lights, which is shining towards the wall, should be more than enough as well. So do go and try it and then leave a comment below and let me know how it goes. And guys, if you haven't joined the notification squad yet, I highly suggest that you enable the notification bell after you subscribe so you don't miss the next video, which I'll be uploading very soon to the channel. Now, when you're preparing your room to play, there are other things which you're gonna have to do, which don't necessarily involve the lighting to make sure that you have the proper tracking as well. It's highly advisable to avoid playing in areas where the walls, for example, have a glossy finish or where you have, for example, any mirrors or perhaps any picture frames that have glass on them. But at the same time, you also want to avoid any surfaces that have too many dark kind of areas 
or any fabrics or any objects around that are too dark because the opposite will happen, especially if, for example, you have a backdrop which is made of cotton or some kind of fabric, it will actually absorb the photons, not allowing enough of them to go back to the headset, which again will affect the tracking. It's very important that the headset is able to read the LEDs as clearly as possible. So don't have too much clutter all around the walls. If you have a couple of picture frames, it should be absolutely fine. But if you have a whole wall of them, or for example, you're playing perhaps in an area which has a pattern on the wallpaper, then you definitely might have some issues there as well. And finally, if you're playing in a space, for example, a green screen area, and you find that you can't place any objects around you, or that you're getting a little bit of stutter inside of the VR headset, what you can do is just print a few QR codes and put them around you. And normally it should give enough tracking data for the VR headset to do its job properly.